The Star Wars Civil War continues, people. Oh, boy. Rumor has it (laughs) Kathleen Kennedy (laughs) might be stepping down. We covered the last story that was breaking about this, like last week, about, you know, they might be resetting the Star Wars trilogy. Hiding the sequels in the veil of the Force. Which was funny. (laughs) (laughs) This could be just a really stupid rumor, most likely is, right? Mm -hmm. But now Kathleen Kennedy stepping down. You tell me that. I'm likely to believe it. (laughs) Consider. Considering yeah. everything. Just the fact that her name has seeped into the greater Star Wars canon in a villainous kind of way. Yes. <laughs> for Star Wars fans, for better or for worse. And I automatically don't think she'd want to keep doing it. That's just my opinion. If I was her, <laughs> I, I, would I would be would, totally soured on this experience. I would hate to do it. I mean, you know, say what you will about the films. For the crime of trying to bring y'all a new Star War, I think <laughs> I would feel pretty weird coming back after yeah. all of this. Yeah. And please keep in mind, this is not... Uh, an opinion piece on the movies themselves that I'm talking about right now. I'm just talking about what it must be like to be in Kathleen Kennedy's position. That's strictly where I'm coming from on this. But let's go through this article. Star Wars Reset includes Kathleen Kennedy stepping down. (laughs) Details, once again, come from the future ruler of Earth, Lord Doomcock. Everyone's favorite source. From the Overlord DVD (laughs) YouTube channel. You know, I want to just really see what what, what he looks like. Who is the future ruler of Earth? Overlord... I mean, do you do you like see his face? Uh, uh, oh, how fun! He looks like a like a <laughs> like a Power Ranger, but also MF Doom. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like anonymous. This is like a V for Vendetta status, but with a YouTube but with, channel. That's a fun know, gimmick. Yeah, but with Star Wars, I've already made a full conclusion of what the channel's about <laughs> from the ten that ten seconds that of looking little at little image. Yeah, <laughs> just judge that book by its cover. A uh, recall it was Doomcock who revealed all those Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker spoilers and. Doomcock even revealed trouble at Disney with Brie Larson prior to the directing and writing team being let go from the Captain Marvel sequel. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Brie Larson got a flat tire on her way to an audition for Terminator and didn't get it? You know why? Because Brie Larson is the worst. Yeah, she now she's here worst. on YouTube to steal she all of our the YouTube worst. subscribers from us. <laughs> Marvel's going to pay I her to review the personally movies. personally hate Brie Larson. <laughs> I've met her and I know. <laughs> Star Wars Civil War taking place at Lucasfilm. Doomcock has gone on record stating sources have filled him in that a source... Oh man, if you guys haven't seen my leaking news segment about Disney buys the rights of the Bible, I, I, I hope you appreciate it. It might seem very hypocritical to be covering this in a genuine way (laughs) and then to do a satire piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, but, you know, there's irony in everything nowadays. So in that sense, we're keeping with the zeitgeist. Uh, You know, we're, I guess we're just hypocrites. Let's just, we'll just say that, I guess. Everyone's a hypocrite a little bit. Doomcock has gone on record stating sources have filled him in that a secret plan in the works to save Star Wars that involves some sort of Star Wars civil war taking place at Lucasfilm between Kennedy and those loyal to Lucasfilm Lucas Favreau and Dave Filoni. Just imagine them. Lonely just like, battle. It's the <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy and a bunch of women. <laughs> <And> then, yeah, <laughs> I just imagine Kathleen Kennedy alone <laughs> and then Lucas <laughs> Favreau Filoni and just an army of dudes car- behind the Cardboard cutouts of female bodies. <laughs> yeah. This is what I represent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it starts to get boiled down to that and I think it's kind of sad because I wonder, I, I don't want to be that guy, but I'm gonna. Like, what would happen if the producer was just another dude? Like, I looked up her credits before she shooting this video and she has produced like so many beloved films and executive produced like the entire Back to the Future franchise. as good like, as your last movie, John. Apparently. Doomcock, You're only as good as your Star Wars movie. And Doom, in, prob- in some eyes, yeah. <laughs> and Doomcock's previous report was saying that the Star Wars reset will involve the erasure of The Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their concept introduced in Star Wars Rebels animated series, The Veil of the Force. And then here's what he says. Kathleen Kennedy's reign of terror is almost at an end. I've been sitting on this information for weeks now, seeking further confirmation, but at this point I've heard enough from various viewpoints to credit this rumor may have some validity to it. It's explained that Kennedy is dead set against the plan as it will undo everything she has done with Disney's Star Wars. It attacks her legacy in a fundamental way. 
It's a stinging rebuke to our authority and vision and repudiation of <laughs> urban prayer. Is that how you say it? Repudiation. Yeah, repudiation. Who's the real idiot in this video? Uh, <laughs> of her brand of identity politics and a signal to a grateful world that the force isn't female at all, but belongs to everyone. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, is that the point? I guess so. <laughs> okay. That's, I mean, that's, uh, this is everyone who hates. That's what Finn was trying to tell Ray. He's like, that's why I can't use the force. I'm not a girl. I'm not a woman. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, the plan to save Star Wars couldn't happen with Kennedy in charge of Lucasfilm, which means when her contract expires in 2021, she is. Nearly. Dead? Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> oh, God. She's flat out dead. Nearly a month ago, my source notified me that a big meeting had taken place regarding the future of Lucasfilm. Bob Iger and Bob Chappick both participated in the meeting, which is significant. But even more significant was who did not participate in the meeting. Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilm. I am informed that Kennedy never, never, never misses meetings, meetings, meetings like these. And so her absence was notable. One would think a meeting about the future of Lucasfilm would include the head of Lucasfilm. But according to my source, Kennedy did not participate in this meeting. I don't know if I made it clear enough, but Kennedy was is not, not in this, this meeting. meeting. That is so important. <laughs> Do we know why? <laughs> it's claimed to know why. that a few days, maybe it was a Zoom meeting and they she couldn't get her internet properly working. It's a claim that a few days prior to the big meeting, Kennedy had a meeting of her own that lasted an hour. And after she left, Kennedy withdrew from contact with underlings <laughs> and... Did it's cocaine. A great way to put that. <laughs> <laughs> I will no longer speak to you. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, Kennedy's right hand contacted the staff, which is predominantly female. Important detail. If not exclusively, and reportedly oh, no. conveyed the following message on behalf of Kathleen Kennedy. Miss Kathy has decided she will not be pursuing an extension of her contract, so if any of you wish to stay with her, you best be making your minds up. You have time. There is no need for any rash decisions. But Miss Kathy has plans to open a female-centric production company. And if you choose not to have this contract ongoing with her, you're a sexist, plain and simple. According, I mean, <laughs> if you're a man, you should try and get into that female-centric yeah. company just yeah. to prove it. <laughs> See if you can lead it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so unsexist. I'm the head of a women's yeah. company. According to Doomcock. <laughs> The <laughs> rumors going around Lucasfilm that the meeting Kennedy attended saw Kennedy provided with data regarding how Star Wars has been falling under her leadership. Oh, no. Yeah. No, we know that. Uh, movies, <sighs> merchandise, and parks have been downtrending, something I have been covering for years. At this point, I have been informed that Kennedy's contract will not be renewed. All right. She'll be going to create her own production company. Her leadership will be missed. Did Doomcock this, this, say this, this that? Is contradictory. <laughs> but Disney looks forward to what Kathleen will do with her new company. If this is true, it appears that Kathleen Kennedy's <laughs> reign of terror. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to believe that this was delivered with a tongue in its cheek. Otherwise, oh my god! What I find funny about this is even if you even if you really believe it's a state of like pandering or forced agendas or diversity things like that, if you if you genuinely believe that, okay. I fail to see how the intent of wanting to represent that though is a terrible is is yeah malicious <laughs> yeah. thing that's the part of the argument i don't get well and <laughs> and why people only place it on kathleen kennedy when disney across the board does this as do many companies you know like the very sensibility they're compl people complain about with the star wars sequels apart from the canon lore stuff but you know the sensibility is across the board disney there's a kathleen kennedy's reign of terror might finally be near its end and a reign of terror is exactly what it's rumored to have been after the financial success of The Force Awakens, Kennedy was foolishly given free reign to do whatever she wanted with The Last Jedi. The result was a sham, a crass and tasteless propaganda film, a shameless Jesus. checklist of woke talking points overflowing with virtual signaling and contempt for what Kennedy perceives as the patriarchy, utterly devoid of narrative coherence, creative integrity, or anything resembling Star Wars. Oh my God. Wow, you know. God, oh. Kudos. Let me that's, get you a hanky, my friend. That's well. <laughs> that's, well, that's well. That was a beautiful, well written. <laughs> beautiful essay right there. That was a beautiful thought piece. That's well written. You got to give it to him. <laughs> like, I got to yeah. 
it's completely <laughs> it's completely over the top but it is a like if this was about some like real world warmonger I would be yeah, like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah take yeah. him down <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> Kennedy had her way with Star Wars in an almost biblical sense and then set about changing God. the culture and mission of Lucasfilm, <laughs> stacking the staff with feminist ideologues and weeding out any employees that failed to live up to her political litmus test. Case in point, Dave Filoni. I don't want to argue with Star Wars fans about if Last Jedi was a real Star Wars movie or not. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. You know what? They're all made up. <laughs> yeah, I all just, fantasies. I feel like this is a little over dramatic. It, uh, it's very over dramatic. <laughs> I think that's the funny thing to to me about it. Like I said, if you do think these agendas seem to be more about agenda based and not enough about narrative Star Wars proper storytelling then all right, fine. I just don't think it is this hellstorm, this wonderfully worded out. Yeah. Is, is putting together. I can't get on board with it. It's just so funny to me. Well, yeah, and it, and it reads poor to me because especially being like, ah, oh, you know, the whole goal of stacking the deck with feminist ideologues and whatnot. And I'm like, some of the stuff you're talking about, yes, is clunky in its integration to the movie, but it's not unfair to be like, let's represent more people in the Star Wars because sure. it's literally a, a vast universe with like tons of aliens and up until recently one black person <laughs> in ways i do think that that there's a bit of an ideological breakdown that some Star Wars fans are going to want that progress and some aren't. Again, wonder if these things had happened in a more fluid way, would anyone have noticed? I mean, did I miss some report? I'm obviously doing the most general paraphrasing <laughs> in the world here. Did I miss some report where a man named Ryan Johnson had a specific vision for The Last Jedi and then Kathleen Kennedy stepped in <laughs> and said, I have some woke things I want in this movie or else no, no. Because I've been under the impression the thing that happened with Last Jedi where everything went wrong for they, Star Wars fans they was let Ryan Ra Johnson they let Ryan make Johnson a Ryan Johnson do Johnson whatever the movie. hell he wanted, right? Yeah. That, that, that's the impression I got. Yeah, yeah. And then post that, you got Solo and you got uh, Lord and Miller doing a little too much of their thing on the heels of that and then you get them removed. Yes, that's why I find the whole vitriol, this whole thing about woke agenda, not a productive argument because I thought the issue was Ryan Johnson mm. did whatever he wanted, not he wanted to do something, and Kathleen Kennedy was like, no, you got to put all this other shit in here. Yeah. That really... I don't know. That's just not what... I feel like Ryan Johnson wanted to subvert... It's the meme of that movie is subverting expectations, and I feel like he wanted to subvert a lot of action movie and, and sci-fi adventure movie tropes with the choices that he made. And yeah, she was probably on board with some of those choices, but it does track a little funny to me to call so much attention to that, be like this woman executive producer right. who's the head who wants to start this female-centric right. company who loaded her team with feminists, ruined all this stuff. When yeah, like the last... Jedi, it seems like Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams comes back and he gets to course correct and kowtow to fans and it seems like a lot of dudes are calling shots even still on Star Wars. It's just maybe those dudes aren't exactly yeah. the right team either. You know? I mean, it, it in between Kathleen Kennedy, a step below would be the directors who have all been men yeah. and then above Kathleen Kennedy would be Bob Iger. So... And Bob <laughs> Iger, if you look at those ads that play on Instagram for his master class, the first thing he's like, we're all about inclusion here here at Disney. We want as many different kinds of people to see themselves represented in our films as possible. Nah, I mean, maybe he's just saying that. I think that's why being woke has gotten such a, one of the reasons that I think woke has gotten such a bad rap. Corporations <laughs> who don't... Don't who, get it. Don't truly... I mean, first off, woke just used to apply to black people. Yeah. That's what it first applied to. And then yeah, that's what somehow the this is a whole this is like a very, very long off tangent conversation we could get into. But somehow it's become about a whole bunch of things that it have been sort of label. like culturally appropriated and become cancel culture. And I'm like, that's not what it that's not what being woke actually first meant. Yeah, it's or just about, it's about <laughs> yeah. seeing through bullshit to the truth. It was first that, just yeah. it was mainly just for like it, it really erupted during the Black Lives Matter movement many years ago. Yeah. And then it, it was mainly just dealing 
dealing with racial injustices. Now no one can really even define what it is. <laughs> My point with that is yeah. there are people who claim to be a part of woke culture but can't define it. And then there are people who hate woke culture and they can't even define it. Well, because there's <laughs> a pressure. It's yeah. pressurized. There's like this onus on us all. I mean, yeah, you, you <laughs> theoretically in an ideal world, we would all want to be what being woke is trying to get at, which is just, you know, seeing as much of the world for what it is as possible. Yeah. And, you know, treating people with that kind of respect that comes with that. I feel like it comes down to the fact that, yeah, there are some people who are still learning. I mean, it's it's something that affects us all. And yeah, you watch these studios and stuff basically try to commodify it because I think you get two halves, basically. You get the people who actually are paying attention and learning, who are authentically kind of making the mistakes, but also mm -hmm. learning through them. And then you have the people who are posturing and trying to appear as woke as possible just to fortify yeah. the brand. And I think that there is a lot of that because you get these people in boardrooms and we've had leaked emails before to suggest that at least some of the things these producers talk about behind the scenes are a bit as silly as you might imagine and yeah like I can totally hear producers chatting back and forth in my head going ah uh, can we the kids want to be woke these days yeah, can we get uh, you know exactly. a black guy in here once being diverse or representation became trendy then suddenly you could feel where the disingenuous qualities come from and now at least on the online world <laughs> that's what woke culture is now associated with is all the negative stuff and so it's kind of it's sad when you think about it it's where just, yeah. what woke used to represent and now what woke culture has the spotlight on <laughs> is just negative things it's no longer a positive association when the whole thing was originally anyway it, this is something i could do a whole podcast about could you not i've been down the wormhole of yeah of, i saw a video where someone was like what does woke culture mean and then i found myself going like wait what does woke culture for me yeah. and then i decided to go through like oh th this actually started like many 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 years ago and suddenly like well here's when it started erupted in the early 2000s and then a few years ago with black lives matter and then and then watching the trajectory did a whole bunch of research on it <laughs> yeah and so it was like two hours of <laughs> trying to understand what are the things that people have issues with the woke culture and what is woke culture actually about and then now what the spotlight is all on it's, it's, a, it's a whole you can't sum it up in like five minutes you can't it's uncomfortable because so, yeah. it calls you to look at yourself and to confront things that you might not be comfortable with and I think that that's the ultimate thing is if you calm a lot of people down who are upset about this I don't think anybody would have that hard of a time agreeing that yeah like we should have every kind of person in a Star Wars yeah. movie and you know maybe they should do a couple different things with them but the problem is it becomes especially with the label just this big faceless force of ah these people who overreact yeah. to stuff and who just want to social justice us up my movie there's more nuance to it than that than people don't give yeah. it credit for it's that it's not black and white topic I, yeah. I mean that in a race way i mean that in like a cat in a category way it's not an all or nothing discussion here yeah and i think that's the that's a big issue with what's happening is we've lost what the we we're not aware of the gray area of this anymore and people <laughs> attribute this as the thing that is ruining at least a certain group attribute yeah. as this is the thing that ruins star wars is the woke culture yeah. effect on it when really it's just you know some inconsistent decisions maybe a little lack of foresight yeah you know certain things like that and hey foresight ah force ghosts <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you know and maybe at the end of the day kathleen kennedy and star wars is just not the best creative pairing and that's fine too yeah i just don't think that she's this evil overlord who kicked in the door and was like I want to ruin Star yeah. Wars for you or I want to make it only my thing because those movies are clearly trying to reach the widest audience possible still I feel like even if her intent with it wasn't realized to the best extent it could have been I still like really it kind of upsets me the way people just dogpile the vitriol on top of her. Well yeah I mean that's the that's the shitty thing about it and that's why I brought up Ryan Johnson with this because I've seen barely any mention. I don't. I haven't heard his name once in this. And I'm bringing up the woke thing uh, because, like, the, everything I said was not necessarily a defense for what woke culture has sort of turned into. That's not why I brought it up. I brought it up because I don't think woke culture is the problem it's <laughs> not. with this. Yeah. Because I remembered that it was Ryan Johnson had too much free reign. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow the discussion has turned into woke culture has ruined Star Wars. Well, and and ideals, ideas that harmonize with wokeness are going to 
inevitably appear in a yes. movie that is a Nazi allegory. I mean, if <laughs> we're if, taking down an evil, discriminatory dictator I, empire, I guess my my question is is if Kathleen Kennedy was a guy, Kevin Kennedy or something, <laughs> right? If he was a guy, and he said, Jamie Kennedy, he said, Ryan Johnson, do your own thing with the and he and he, Ryan Johnson made exactly the Last Jedi. Would it still have t- morphed into this? You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's basically why I brought all that up. And Would I'm not trying to care so much. It's not really like it's not my fault that I got like a little bit of a political talk in here. <laughs> it's the fucking what's happening with Star Wars. No, it's it's, yeah. the, it's one of the things people hate about this is either yeah. yeah that the Last Jedi just really spat in the face of the mythology, or they're just woken up my Star <laughs> yeah. Wars and they're you know, throwing it in my face. And and the disingenuousness of that is worth taking issue with, not the ideals themselves. And uh, and I feel like a lot of people get lost in the woods there, you know, fighting against something that we ought not to be. And I'll say I've said it several times. I'm going to repeat it again. Yeah. If I miss something about Ryan Johnson being forced to to put in quote unquote woke agendas, mm-hmm. let me know. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. It's, I I haven't heard anything about it. <laughs> well, Ryan yeah. Johnson's uh, trilogy is just all going to be about like a black queer trans <laughs> you know, <laughs> gray Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like totally dismantling all of the Star Wars mythology, <laughs> which I mean, I would I would go watch. But <laughs> yeah. Moving on with this article, the acrimony is genuine. Lucasfilm is a house at times bitterly divided, and there is indeed a new hope for Star Wars as a number of positive changes are rumored to be coming. Again, as previously explained, the plan is to use the veil of the Force to cancel out Kennedy's sequel trilogy and decanonize things. Doomcock also points out that Kathleen Kennedy leaving Disney and Lucasfilm looks to be true because of the recent announcement regarding Star Wars Celebration getting pushed back by two years which is the year after kennedy's contract expires that's fair <laughs> it could have a, a wide variety of things though you know the the coronavirus stuff. <laughs> you know the fact that they don't really know what they're doing with their movies yet and usually i mean star wars celebration has been going on for a long time mm-hmm. but you know there's anyway why pre-cancel the event for 2021 after all no one has an idea what the situation with the contagion will be like from a year from now why not just wait and see why postpone this, the event to 2022 well my friends ask yourself what will of ended by 2022. The answer is simple. Kathleen Kennedy's contract. <laughs> we to talk about pushing agendas. <laughs> Two cock yeah. goes on to say that starting in 2022, Disney wants to start fresh with the franchise and bring the old fans back. He says the Star Wars Celebration 2022 will see the announcement of a new head of Lucasfilm, if not prior, and that Kennedy will be moving on. It would indeed be a significant reset for Lucasfilm and it would generate genuine heat for revamped Star Wars moving back to the basics Lucas originally intended and away from the div- divisive identity politics that has crippled the franchise and divided the fan base. It's said that one source is stating John Favreau will be named as the new head of Lucasfilm. However, another source of Doomcock says that a completely neutral party will be brought in as an... Oh, that's interesting. Moving forward to calm down all the internal problems and start fl- fresh. Huh. An additional rumor is also saying that the Star Wars products, including Galaxy's Edge, will get remodeled to include actual Star Wars for the fan. What? What does that mean? Does that mean? <laughs> actual? Star- you mean like? Oh, because, like is, is it because the, the 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 Galaxy's Edge is mainly based on the latest trilogy and not really about celebrating the original trilogy? That's I That's guess my best guess. I'm getting, yeah. And in all honesty, all this being said, if you made it to this point in the video, I think Kathleen Kennedy should step down. <laughs> Do I think that there's elements of Star Wars and uh, this recent one where perhaps certain things were agendas were being pushed? Maybe. I don't know. I just, I, to me, it's not as obvious as other things. But to some, it's yeah. apparently it's like extremely obvious. Okay, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, because they obviously wanted to include representation. But at the same time, like a lot of times, it's very mild. Like a couple of lesbians kissing at the end of Rises, and you have to really like, oh wait a minute, it was that a couple of gays right there? You yeah, know? yeah. Like and, that. The, and the <laughs> irony is that that isn't even doing that much. Yeah, you know? like, yeah that's, and, and that's what I mean. Were there a lot of female centric characters yeah there were a lot of dudes too <laughs> but other than the fact there was more of a female presence in the recent edition of star wars i t- didn't pick up on anything about it being women deserve to be more recognized you know what i mean yeah it's like yes you got Ray, you got Jin Erso, you got Holdo. You know, you got. Well, and you got the whole, like, you know, Poe, you got a stand down thing, and the reasoning from Holdo not being terrific for that, and, you know, for him not to go off, you know, and, uh, you know, be rogue and go fight, you know, rashly or whatever in The Last Jedi. Was that a comment on the sexes, though? <laughs> I didn't, well, it I mean... was just like in, in a more normal, you know, space action adventure, the dude would just be like, I know what to do, and I'm going to follow my gut, and I'm going to go do it. And instead of that, he's 
checked and, you know, kind of told like, hey, your rash behavior might actually be a detriment to us, which is like kind of subversion of a trope. I thought that was Ryan Johnson trying to do something with a character. Both. Well, it is. <laughs> it, it is. It's giving yeah. that character a moment. Like, yeah. I thought, again, th that's a thing I thought was I at mean, least interesting in the nugget. I thought the was... whole Finn and Poe shit was kind of boring. All right? I'm not, I'm not going to defend it like... It was good storytelling, guys. I feel like <laughs> if there was really some hardcore agenda pushing, they would not have bitched out on making those two dudes in love. Like they, <laughs> like they, I for as much as there was fan memory and people being like, "Come yeah. on, make Finnegan," like and Poe and and, and uh, John Boyega and and uh, Oscar Isaac were even for that. And you look, know? it's not it's not our fault that we're focusing on this. This whole article. <laughs> It's, it's become it's, this. It's, it's, and this whole discussion has, yeah, it's it's evolved into this. Mm -hmm. and it's devolved, devolved into, into this. this. I'm not like the one who's like, I'm turning this video into it. <laughs> this is, well, this the, is kind of like sad <laughs> to it, me. <laughs> it is because we're, I feel like we're just mad at the wrong thing. I honestly could hear you out if you, if you're like, this is not proper Star Wars. This is not proper Star. Like that, I, I could totally hear you on. I thought Captain Marvel was. Huh? Like, you say that shit about Captain Marvel? Yeah. I'm like, oh, that shit's, like, very aware. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's stuff in there yeah. where, like, you're... You're you're really putting that at the uh, there are, in certain scenes where you're putting that at the front and center. There are yeah, yeah definitely scenes that come out like a feminist theory. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like that one I could see it. At. This though, I just didn't see it. Other than the fact that you had more females, and, well, and that's and pretty the, much it. But the big thing I wonder, especially, especially, especially about these Star Wars sequels, is what would we have all been sitting here talking about had we lived in a slightly different culture where there isn't so much made out of that? Because also, when those movies are coming out in the lead up to right at the time they're dropping there's all this talk about like oh Rose Tico first ever Asian female this and and like there's so much of a deal made out of it in both the positive and the negative light I wonder if we just hadn't been talking that much about it would this be as big of an issue on this movie because it's just in the cultural consciousness to a degree that I feel like people can also get overly sensitive on the opposite side yeah. and attack it where it doesn't deserve to be I, attacked and it only really ever deserves it if it's disingenuous you know exactly you know sometimes it's very apparent what they're doing most likely i'm likely to believe that they were like we need to cast an asian person for this we need to cast a woman i could see that right which is fair it's it's a fair it's fair it's in a, a fair time where there's say. disproportionate My, casting with yeah. the producer mentality and whatever or maybe the writer director wanting to like include that more for whatever intention they have right mm -hmm. i guess the thing though is did the story itself make it about that mm -hmm. other than casting yeah was the story, the narrative. Were the themes were, about that. Was it about it? Most likely. I'm likely to believe it. They were like, we should make Rose Tico an Asian girl. I could, I could right. see that. There was nothing in that movie that was about Rose being an Asian girl other than the fact that Rose was an Asian girl. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, they cast an Asian girl and she's a prominent <laughs> character and that's the different thing about that, you know? All that being said, I think Kathleen Kennedy should step down. <laughs> Because the movies Move just have not connected. I would hate to look at their line graph and be like, oh, man, that's a really, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, would, I would hate to see that. There are people who are probably better suited right now in the cultural zeitgeist who are just well more versed in Star Wars. Like people like Dave Filoni, people like Jon Favreau. Yes, they're two white dudes. All right. But I'm not <sighs> even making it about that. The point I think is, they would be better to do it. The, the point, the ultimate point is, yeah, finding who best to honor the spirit and the core ideals right. of Star Wars. That's what's important to this yes. conversation, whoever that may be. So, I mean, it's, it's not all or nothing. It, it, like, I, well, no, and, and, I don't agree with so much of woke culture agenda being pushed in here but i can also tell you i don't think kathleen kennedy should continue here and nah, it's not it's be, a toxic relationship. and it's and it's not it's beyond that too it's like it's just it's clearly like the yes the toxicity with the fans the the unappreciation that factors into my reasoning for why she should step down absolutely i don't think that her the way she has you need someone like a kevin feige who can oversee a franchise like this in a way that is uh, creative and also is able to keep the fans happy and just what they've been dishing out. There have been too many strikes coming out of those films. Because she is the leader, she's going to get the blame. Clearly what she's been trying to do with Star Wars hasn't been working. So get someone else in there, yeah. you know. Get George transgender Lucas queer, <laughs> okay, my guy. All right. Well... Star Wars. <laughs> do you want the Benioff and Weiss trilogy? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs>
<laughs> Leave your thoughts down below on all this shit. Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click the notification bell. Subscribe to Overlord because he's going to dominate the Star Wars sphere soon. I should just give the studio over to him. Maybe he's got the, the overall sight. Yes. <laughs> and last but not least, let's do a... Tyler Haig. Hey, Tyler. Hey, buddy. How's it going? So we've been talking in messages. You saw your last shout out. Ooh. John. Yeah. I think it's now time <gasps> you demand a PS5 from Tyler Haig. Tyler, listen, buddy. I love you, man. And I feel like that love hasn't been reciprocated well enough beyond your generosity over many, 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 many months of being our patron. And quite frankly, I mean, I'm working my ass off for your love. I think you're a beautiful man. And I wish you could cradle me at night. But I think a PS5 would, would probably you know, suffice. Wow, so. you are a terrible person. I How, am. You demand a PS5 That's right. from a longtime patron who's already right. showed their support. See, when he gave me a PS4. I'm a greedy that, guy. That was unexpected and came out of nowhere as a gift. You're demanding from him. Yeah, Tyler. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Wow, John. I'm sorry, Tyler. Tyler. I am step sorry. Step it up, buddy. I All am right. sorry. You're being a real Kathleen Kennedy about this. You. I don't know what that joke <laughs> means. I don't get it either, but it's sure. Okay. It's just going to become this. This is going to become the new thing to say when you don't like a decision. But anyway. Seriously, Tyler. I love you whether or not you send me a PS5 <laughs> because you are a lovely, lovely, thoughtful, and caring human being. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Be well.